Hello everybody, it's Jay Roby, and I um, hope you like the new opening sequence, spread it together today, and uh, for my long-term subscribers, if you can, uh, first person to post what match that was, um, I'll give you props up in the next video. But uh, I wanted to go over one of my matches today, after I made my exploring uh, Bobby Fischer's uh, openings number five, dealing with the Alakines, I went back to my personal game database from a free internet chess server, and I found this match um, that I played not too long ago, and um, I was playing white as uh, J. Roby. And my opponent uh, got into the Alakines defense, and this turned out to be one of my highest rated uh, wins um, on the Free Internet chess server. I think he was uh, rated 1900 and some. So I open up with my king's pawn, and my opponent played his knight out to f6. So I go ahead and play uh, pawn to e5, and he gets into the Alakines defense. Uh, but back then, um, I thought I'd try something a little bit new and a little bit different, because he was rated so high, and uh, during this match I was rated 1445, so I knew that if I lost that it wasn't going to go down drastically. So I think I got a little bit... Um, you know, a little bit more willing to try new things out here. So what I played is I played bishop to c4. He pulled his knight, uh, knight back attacking my bishop, and I decided to sack my bishop. So I take his pawn on uh, f7 here, and he has to take back with the king, so he does that. And then I develop my knight with check, or sorry, develop my queen with check, and my opponent moves uh, his king back to its starting position on e8. And from here I play my pawn to d4. And my opponent plays pawn to e6, and I develop my knight, and he brings his queen out, and I castle, and he offers up a queen trade here, and um, ever since I started uh, posting videos on YouTube and learning chess, I had subscribers tell me fairly early on that, you know, one of the most important things is you have to evaluate the trade, and is it going to help your position, or is it going to help your opponents? So I saw here that if I would have went through with the trade, um, that really I'm just helping him get into a castle position sooner because let's say I play a developmental move he can just develop his bishop and then from here he can bring his rook right to f8 and get into a castle type position um, so I didn't want to go down that line so when he offered up the trade here um, I just played my queen to g3 and my opponent uh, develops his bishop and then I bring my bishop out attacking his so he takes and I recapture and then from this point, uh, my opponent uh, kicks my queen all around a little bit, pushes pawn to h6, so I pull the queen back, and then he develops pawn to uh, g5. So he's uh, building up a little bit of a storm here on my castle position. Uh, so what I do is I play my pawn out to um, f4. I want to open up access for my rook. Now he can't, uh, well he could capture here, uh, but he doesn't. He moves his queen off of this file um, because my rook eventually is going to get access there. Um, so from here I capture with my pawn and he captures with his queen and he offers up a trade again. So I move my queen to f3 and now he doubles uh, his queen and his rook together and as you can see here um, it's not a great position to be in so um, to kind of avoid getting a mate in one later on I just go ahead and land the check with my queen supported by the rook here and my opponent plays uh, king to d8 and then from here I move my pawn up to g3 blocking this checkmate threat and he offers up a trade. And I looked at the position and I decided at this time that I'd go ahead with it. So he recaptures. And then I land the check with my rook and he puts his king on to uh, e7. And I pull my rook back to f3. He offers up a trade again. Now you got to remember, at this point in time, I'm still two pawns behind because of that bishop sack. Um, so I'm trying to preserve my material as much as possible. Um, but I did notice here that um, he had... Uh, his bishop here is undeveloped and blocked in. He hadn't developed his knight here yet, and his king was exposed. So I thought I would try to uh, generate a quick kingside attack. So I go ahead and I trade this rook. He captures back, and then I move my knight to uh, c3, giving this rook access to come into the action. So he puts his knight now onto d5 attacking mine, uh, but there's no immediate threat by this knight. So I just go ahead and I land the check. He pulls the king to uh, g7, and now I take his knight. He recaptures, so I've doubled up his pawns here, uh, which doesn't last long. And then I move my knight uh, to try to help contribute with this rook. He plays uh, pawn to c6. I check with the knight. He brings the king down. Um, and then I support my knight with my pawn here. And he plays his pawn now to d6. And instead of capturing, I check with the rook. He moves his king off. Now I have to protect this pawn here, so I do that, but in the process I lose this pawn here, so he captures uh, on uh, e5. So I capture back, 
he develops night now at uh, fork in my rook and my pawn. So I just uh, protect the pawn. It's going to be hard to protect this pawn, and you're going to see why here. So he attacks my rook directly with the knight. So I have to move my rook. So what I decided to do is to pin this bishop down to the rook for the short term. He plays uh, pawn to b6, and I tried to uh, bring my king into position so I can push this pawn up with check and then have my king uh, defend the pawns here. He uh, moves his bishop, opening up access for his rook, and I'm still two pawns behind, so I don't want to trade my rook off just yet. So I just move my rook now, attacking his bishop. He uh, brings his rook out. Now I can't really take the bishop because the knight's protecting it. So from here I just uh, move my pawn up one. He attacks this pawn twice, once with his bishop and once with his knight. So I take this pawn because I'm going to lose this one anyway. And then from here I attack his unprotected pawn. And my opponent makes a blunder here. Um, so blunders do happen from high rated players, like this guy was rated 1900 and some. Um, he opted to try to protect this pawn and he moved his bishop. Unfortunately what this let me do is simply move my pawn up to b4. Um, so now he's got two pieces that are being attacked and um, you know he's going to lose one for sure. So he decides to keep the knight. I take the bishop with the rook and he captures my pawn. Uh, but right now material is equal. So I've equalized material. So from here I play my knight out to uh, g7. He attacks my knight with his uh, king and rook. So I pull the knight back again checking. He moves his king to e6 and I pull my rook attacking this pawn here. And my opponent uh, plays his knight down at capturing this pawn. So he's uh, pawn up right now. Um, but I take one back right away and check. And now he moves king to uh, d7. And if you can see the move that I played, uh, good job. If not, uh, take a moment and look at it. Uh, but it's just a fork. So knight forks queen and rook. And there goes his rook. So from here I've got a full rook up on my opponent. Uh, so it's just a matter of time. Um, so what I did uh, for the end game here is I just brought my rook down because he did have this pawn coming down here. And I was prepared at this point to sack uh, my knight if I had to, which it turns out that I did because uh, I was just getting too cramped. So I just took the pawn here, he recaptures, and now I start to move my, my G pawn up. He's trying to uh, get his knight into position to support the pawn coming down. And I just keep marching the pawn up. And now he's one step away from promotion, uh, but when I promote here, it's with check. So I'm not too worried about it. So he has to move the king over. I check again. He moves the king here. And then at this point in the match, my opponent resigns uh, because it's my move. And all I have to do is take this knight, and this pawn is pinned to the king, which forces the king to uh, you know, either move to uh, e3 or um, a1. Either way, it's going to be checkmate very quick. So my opponent decided to resign at this point. Um, oops, that wouldn't have been checkmate. <laughs> um, so it was a good match, and um, you know, it was um, tried something a little bit different in the beginning. And you know, my my interest in the Alakines has been uh, peaked um, over the last few, uh, well, I'd say the last week here, since I made that video, looked into it, researched it a little bit. Um, simply because I don't see it online a lot, and I'm thinking that, you know, maybe focusing on that defense wouldn't be a bad idea. Currently, I'm using the Sicilian, and I, I love the Sicilian, but a lot of people play the Sicilian. So, a lot of white players kind of know, you know, good tricks and traps to use against the Sicilian. Alakines, not so much. You know, it's a different ball game when you're playing against an Alakines defense. I think in this one, I was lucky to get the win. I'll say that right away. I think at the beginning of the match, when I uh, decided to uh, sack my bishop, I think that, um, you know, if my opponent would have played very solid chess after that point, um, I think I probably, you know, would have lost this game. But I think that the thing that helped me win this game uh, in the long run was just not making mistakes and uh, capitalizing on the position as much as possible um, leading up to the end. And then, of course, that nice fork that I got with the knight and the rook um, really helped out at the end. So, um, anyway, I look forward to your feedback on that, and uh, I'll keep you posted on what, what's going on with my Alakines defense. I'm still using the Sicilian now, both on Free Internet Chess Server and uh, Let's Play Chess.com, and I have no plans on changing just yet. Um, I'm trying to keep my opening and my defense the same for uh, at least a year. Um, I don't know, I might change. It's still early on. I've been playing since, let's see, July, August, September, October, November, December. So I'm getting into my sixth month here. Um, so who knows? Maybe I should just change now and go for it. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Looking forward for your, to your feedback. And I uh, hope you like that new intro to the video. So take care, and we'll see you next time.